What's up my fellow plant lovers? My name is Yella and I'm a plant mom. I'm here to show you guys all the tips and tricks that you need to know before becoming a plant parent. I have been a plant mom since January of 2018, so it's been almost three years now. And yeah, I'll show you guys all the tips and tricks that I've learned throughout my plant journey. So if you're interested, then keep on watching. So the first step to do is to figure out the lighting in your home. You need to know if your plants are going to be indoors or outdoors. Do you have north, south, east, or west facing windows? It all depends on the lighting to know what kind of plants you need inside of your home or outside of your home or wherever you would like. So north and south facing windows give out bright and direct sunlight, but south facing windows give more bright and direct sunlight because it's more closer to the sun. But if you have a plant that could see the skylight, that's really good bright and direct light because it can see the sky. And east and west facing windows give direct sunlight, but only during certain times of the day like the east only gives morning direct sunlight and then the west gives evening direct sunlight so depending on the lighting conditions in your home depends on what kind of plants that you would want to have in your home like for example my home you can see all of this light right here this is all natural lighting I don't have any light at all right now I have a south facing window right over here and then I have a north facing window right over there so it all depends on the lighting conditions that you have in your home to know what kind of plants you need. I like to have south facing windows because south facing windows give a lot of bright and direct light as you can see right over here. So a lot of my plants that need bright and direct light are more towards the south facing windows. The second step to becoming a plant parent is to just start. Honestly, just buy your plants and then just go from there. When I first started, I started out in January of 2018 and I bought a bunch of succulents. Succulents are so easy to take care of. Like honestly, all they need is a lot of light and then I just water them like once a week. And that's how I started my plant parent journey because succulents are so easy to take care of. I would say to start off small and easy because you'll never know if this is the right fit for you, if you're gonna be a good plant parent or not. So start off small and easy so that you know if you have a green thumb or not. Some easy plants that I would recommend starting off with is number one, the snake plant. This is the snake plant right over here. This is pointy by the way. He is so freaking cute. This is my baby. My friend gave this to me back in like 2018. And look at, he's so cute. He grows so fast. He didn't have this portion right here before. It was literally just this one, this little head right here, but it was way smaller and he's been growing so much. You can literally put them in any lighting conditions, but they thrive the best in bright and direct light. So this is a really good first house plant. Second house plant that I would recommend is getting a pothos. Right over here, I have a pothos plant. They're so easy to propagate, so easy to take care of. You will not kill them, I swear. They are so easy. And honestly, you can literally propagate them. It's so easy, like these stems right here. I can literally just cut this off, propagate it, put it in water, for a few weeks and then I can put it in soil and I have another plant. So this is another first plant that I would recommend because they're so easy to take care of. You can literally put them in low light or bright to medium in direct light and honestly it will thrive no matter what. Right here is a ZZ plant and this is another plant that I would recommend for beginners because they're so hardy. They're so easy to take care of. Oh my gosh, like literally you can put them in low light or you can put them in bright indirect light and they will thrive. I got this one from Target and it was super small before. I think it was like right here. And look it, it's been growing so much. Like it's so easy to take care of and they literally do not need a lot of light. Another good plant for first time beginners is a Dracaena. These are so easy to take care of. You can literally put them in low light conditions and they won't like get mad at you, I swear. And it's a good first plant for a beginner. They come in small, medium, and they also come in large. So this one is a medium one. I also have a small one, let me show you. This is my small one right here. And then this is like a medium one. And they also grow really large. Like Probably up to my height. I'm five foot. And the last plant that I would recommend for first timers is to get a succulent. This is an aloe succulent. And honestly, succulents are just so easy to take care of. Look at this one. This one's so pretty. All you need is a lot of sun and you water them like once a week. So they're super easy to take care of and I really recommend succulents because that's how I started off as a plant mom. And then once you buy your plants, please research them. Each plant is different. Each plant needs different lighting and watering conditions. So just look them up and then you can go from there. And that's how you start your plant parent journey. The third step is to get the essentials. I recommend getting these items because it helped me throughout my plant parent journey. And the first one is to get a water beater. Water beaters are so easy. All you have to do is stick this in the soil and they'll show you what the moisture is inside of the soil. So it goes from wet, moist to dry. Can you see that? So easy to use. I highly recommend this. Or you can just use your finger. You could just stick your finger in the soil to see if it's wet or not. But honestly, I don't like doing that because I don't like getting dirt inside of my nails. The second essential item is to get watering cans. I personally have two. This is for my indoor house plants and these are for my outdoor plants. I really like using watering cans rather than like a cup or something because it helps water the whole plant rather than just one side. So this is the one for my house plants and then this is the one for my outdoor plants. 
A third essential item I would recommend is to get terracotta pots and pots with drainage holes like this one. This helps with overwatering and root rot so that you don't kill your plants. If you get a decorated pot without drainage holes, then I would recommend either drilling one or keeping the same nursery pot that your plant was in and then just putting it inside of the pot. The fourth and last tip that I would say is to just take care of them. Plants are friends. Plants are like people. Treat them how you want to be treated. They're literally like your pet. Plant care is self-care. Honestly, they really are. If you talk to your plants and just take care of them and touch them every day, I swear to you, it will help them grow. I swear. I promise. Like this one. Hi, Ruffy Pot. I love you. You're so cute. Also, giving them spa days help as well. You need to cut off the bad leaves. You need to rinse off the leaves so that there's no dust on it so that the photosynthesis can work way better. And then you also just need to give them bath days, like rinse them off, make them feel good. Fertilizing helps them grow as well. I'm currently doing a banana home remedy fertilizer. So I literally just take a banana, I eat it, and then put the banana peel in a mason jar, fill it up with water, and then let it sit inside of the fridge for up to 48 hours. And then I use that water to water my plants because it's a really good natural fertilizer. I also heard that coffee is a really good fertilizer too, but I don't drink coffee, so I've never tried it myself. But I mean, by all means, try it out. Another tip I would say is to create a watering schedule or a day to check on your plants. So I check on my plants every week, like on Thursday or Friday, and I usually put it on my calendar. So putting it on your calendar or making phone reminders really help as well. All you have to do is use your water reader or your finger to check the soil to see if they need any water. The last tip to taking care of them is to get organic soil. Honestly, organic everything, even for humans. I always get organic fruits and vegetables. Organic is just the way to go because you'll never know what other brands put inside of their soil to make like the plants not thrive. So just go for organic because organic is life. So that is it. I hope this helps you in your plant parent journey. If this video inspired you to get a plant, please send me a picture. I want to know. Let me know how it goes. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Okay, fuck. <laughs> Shit. Right here, this is a ZZ plant, Zanzibar Gemen or something like that. I don't know, Zanzibar Gem? I don't know. It's because plants are life and I love plants. Plants are my friends. I'll forever, ever, ever have plants in my life because plant care is self-care. Oh no, you need a little cleanup, huh? Mwah. You're in need of a spot, eh, huh, baby girl? You're so cute. Baby, oh, you're in need of a spot, eh, too, huh? All of you are in need of a spot, eh, huh? Yes, you are. You're such a cutie pie.